So, welcome to another episode of Composition using um, Logic, Logic 10 Pro and putting all my ideas down first into the orchestra and from there scoring on two Sibelius. This is the third movement of Uluru Suite and it's quite quite interesting in terms of the number of instruments and the arrangement and the different timings. I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to use the screen as the main focus. So you'll notice here I have colours to represent each instrument. The, uh, the vocalists are in this light colour. Then there's the flutes if they're trilling. Then there's the flutes playing whatever the solos might be or their line, which is here. So you can hear that. Uh, the trill introduced the flute. Here it is in blue. At that point too, the trumpets in that lime green colour are uh, starting up. Have a listen. And this little bit here in green is a gliss up on the flutes. Amazing uh, quality of sound too. It's actually the orchestra being reproduced electronically or digitally, I should say. Trombones in this colour. So you can hear there's a tenor trombone and a bass. Now if I need to look at the notation, I just click that, go here, and the instrument notation is there. And I can, I can actually play and watch, watch, there's the cursor, watch what this, there it is. And if there's any problems, I can edit that panel. The mixer is here, so the full mixer is there, showing every instrument and you can mix. The other interesting part of course is what they call automation up here, right at the top. You click that and these all expand and show individual instrument levels marked by that yellow line. So having shown you those first four, I'll expand into playing the entire track. Track number 34, many of you, you know, you might have six first violins, six seconds, probably at least four violas, even more, uh, in a smaller group, or you can go to the full symphony orchestra, whereas then you probably have 18 firsts, 18 second violins and so on. So, I mean, it's exponential. The other bit I wanted to show you is the vocal line. I had Chelsea Gibson come in and record here. These are actual audio samples and they show you what she actually sang. I'll just solo those. And this is her voice, multi-layered. All those very light greeny blue colours. Alto, soprano, so alto, soprano two, soprano one. SSA, here it is, this is what she sang. 
coming up. actually tell if there's too much at the end of a phrase I can tail it down so her voice drops watch here and you get that fade out putting that with the whole orchestra I'll take the solo button off this is preceding the singing You'll notice there, there was a cello line, and I'll solo that and show you that in isolation. Here it is here, uh, going back to, we're lining up with the voices, and the cello is playing this line. Here it is. And make that arco which is with the bow or pits pizzicato so virtually you've got full control of the orchestra and it enables composers to listen to what their work's going to sound like um, on stage the next part will be looking at how this is transferred to Sibelius so that's now a more of a close-up of the screen itself. I'm going to minimise that and I'm going to go into a program called Sibelius which is such a fantastic program I can play the keyboard and as I play the notes go straight to the staff. So let's open our project. Uh, Sweet Movement 3 and what it's doing now, it's loading the score that I've been working on. And you can see from there, I mean, it's huge. There's just one section of the score that's in 5-4, 4-4, 5-4, 4-4. Four, 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 three, four, three, four, four, four. And it goes with the Aboriginal language here, Chukurapa. So if I play it, so not only can you write the music in, you can play it back. Now how do I do that? Well, let's go to the beginning and look at third movement finale. That's, this is the opening. You can see all my little um, designations are gliss. So that should play in the flute part. Have a listen. Bit more volume there. So I'll get the mixer and I'll just turn up, turn up the whole thing. The master should be a bit louder there. So that little gliss, it's very important that you know how to put these little markings into the score. Here we go, where that arrow is. Okay, down here we have the marimba part, which is quite uh, full on. It's quite there's accents. Then you got your trombone parts here that we talked about in the first section. Here it is.
So scoring a, a, a piece, virtually you go from here, I'll go back to my original logic program, say I want that French horn part, for instance, here, I double click it, I, I write, click on score, this part becomes apparent, okay, I might go to French horn 1, because it's more interesting, there it is, and let's have a listen to that, so the part there is, solo, I then save, select it all, save it as a music XML, I export it as a music XML file and simply take that, go to the file and paste it directly into here. So whatever you've played in Logic 10 goes directly to there and you can edit it, that's the beauty of it. Uh, just an interesting part, I'll go right up to page uh, up to page 8. The interesting bit gets to this page where we're on page 11 and now we've got 7, 4, 4, 4, all these incredible time changes. Have a listen. actually plays all those dynamics as well so you can see it's quite a long process but the end result is you have a, a recording that you've done and then you have the ability to put it onto sheet music amazing all done in this little room hope you enjoyed that more installments coming up ciao